Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Artyom Kasmarski, and uh, I have a background in uh, social science, and more particularly in uh, sociology of science and uh, anthropology of science. Even uh, Basically, the field is called STS, Science Technology Studies. And so the goal of this talk is uh, to give you some input from, let's say, the other side. So we have Blockchain for Science Conference, and basically here we are on the part on the side of the blockchain, yeah, but so I would uh, try to give you some input on these wild ideas from the other side, from science, or to be more precise, from academia. So this is a little bit provocative. Uh, uh, so let's see, um, basic introduction, so to position myself, so uh, like blockchain for science is some a little bit established field, so from the first uh, pilot talks and systems to, uh, to nowadays, so there's quite a few things have been done. So we have some ecosystems, big projects like artifacts, Orvium. We have some more um, specific uh, projects uh, aimed at improving a certain uh, um, a certain field in science, how science works, like peer review funding, publishing. Already we have some labs in Delft, Amsterdam, v Vienna, MIT. So some research has been done, some papers have been published. Yes, and also there have been some pilot projects and discussions in universities across the world. So we cannot say right now that it's brand new field, nothing has been done. So, I mean, there's already something to discuss, some uh, real world cases, some implementation ideas that can already be discussed. So that's my point, all right? Uh, what I mean by blockchain for science generally, I want to make this clear here. Uh, it's not, entire, it's not um, first of all, it's not just about technical solutions, like we have a, just we put a blockchain layer underneath existing peer review in Pablons, whatever, right? So, uh, in my opinion, it's generally, I agree to Sönke's uh, uh, ideas that he br brought up in this big living document. So, blockchain for science is like uh, a little bit about new ways how science should be, should be organized. So here I summarize some key uh, models, key ideas, key approaches that uh, are most, most innovative in a sense. I, I think most of you are more or less familiar with this stuff, so I won't take time to explain explaining what DAO is, what's curation market, so. Okay, is this more or less understandable, yeah? All right. Uh, and here, I, um, particularly I want to emphasize, uh, that's a quotation from Martin Etzold, who unfortunately isn't here today. So about science DAO. So DAO is a, 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 a very uh, representative, very like um, a classic example of new ideology of blockchain for science. So uh, where people can invest, where scientists can collaborate across existing barriers, across existing institutions. And so uh, to science is transformed from a rather rigid, hierarchical, conservative, um, set of uh, institutions into a distributed network, right? Where uh, money flows in, where ideas flow in and out, etc. So that's an important point. Uh, that's um, uh, not exactly about blockchain, but one of the ideas that was uh, and how new ways of funding should, uh, how funding could be organized in a different way. So it's, uh, it's not strictly, it was written, this paper was written before blockchain, but in many ways it's very reminiscent of the, uh, of the ideas of blockchain. So instead of this top-down, top-down uh, structured thing, we have the like peer-to-peer -peer funding idea where all the scientists invest in each other or fund each other or uh, support each other on, on this more or less horizontal layer. Okay. So again, I'm summing up. So uh, this new vision of science at blockchain initiatives uh, are more explicitly or implicitly proposing is about transparency, the uh, collective um, co on collabor collaborative decisions uh, about the rules of the game, about what science is, what projects should be done, what should be funded, what, uh, what the forms of publications are the are most important, whatever, whatever the rules, all right? So decentralization and funding from peers, and tokens as a 
blood of the system, like tokens and material incentives. So uh, there is a, a very uh, important text by Trent McConaughey from Ocean, which basically sums up it as the blockchains are incentive, incentive machines. If you just uh, tune the incentives in the right way, so you have the, the people, the scientists doing uh, working across the goals that, uh, that the system has set with their incentives. Okay. So basically, that's what we are st the starting point. Um, uh, the purpose of the two projects that I've been doing last, me and my colleagues in Russia have been doing last uh, year and a half, is to see how these projects, these ideas are received, are treated, are uh, um, well. Uh, well, yeah, by, by the scientific community, by many, by many representatives of the scientific community. Okay, is this clear? Yes, yeah, so to see how it works. So basically we have two sets of data from two projects. One is more, uh, is, uh, more precisely about blockchain, about the experience of blockchain in some universities, among some startup founders, so many people uh, in this conference, some people in this conference have talked with my colleagues about their experience. So it's, this one is basically about what blockchain is and how it should, it should work and what experience of implementing it has been, has, been, uh, has been there already, right? And the other is a more experimental project. It's, um, it was more about telling people, giving people different ideas like what a DAO is, what a token economy is, and uh, uh, what a TCR is, and uh, asking them, again, in interviews, in group discussions, how, how would this work in your field? What do you think of this? How would this, uh, what would a DAO or a decentralized publishing open access platform uh, work in your university or institute, whatever, you see? Okay, so the results are very nice. Uh, well, uh, let's, let's say uh, the first line of defense goes like this. It's basically about three points. So, you see, one is uh, our existing journals, well, decentralization, why would I need decentralization? Transparency, well, okay, but why would I need transparency? So this doesn't ring a bell. So uh, we have our journals that are, very, that are good enough where our colleagues are. Why would we need a new journal? Okay, it may have a more advanced uh, workflow, more, more, op more open, more decentralized, but so what? Okay, another thing is, uh, well, it's more or less understandable and even banal. UXUI, so we don't have a, a, um, the um, blockchain for science impl uh, applications on the market are not as good to just download, install, and work with them in, in a simple manner. You see? So, okay. The, the third, the third uh, imp important objection is like, okay, that's good, but, well, we will have to fire a lot of people, restructure too many, uh, too many things, so, well, maybe not today. Maybe not today. Maybe not even tomorrow. All right. Okay, is this clear? But this is more or less obvious. That the, I mean, I, I wouldn't make this talk about around this because I mean it's more or less obvious. I mean, and uh, these objections are uh, general. Not only they're not only about blockchain. They are all about all kinds of technical innovations. I mean, printers, Xerox machines. I don't know email. Well, why we need email? We have snail mail. Well, okay. Uh, but this, this is a, it's an important one, but it, it, can also, it can be resolved. I mean, I mean, there are no potential big obstacles to resolving UX, bad UXU. I mean, in a year and a half, oh, how many years will be done? So it's not so, but then there's a, there are another more important issues at stake, and I want to draw attention to them. Okay. One is the, the conflict of values. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the whole idea of value. So value, uh, I, I use this in a psychological, sociological sense as a set of attitudes uh, that are important to a certain group, a certain community. And so they, the thing is that their scientists are very hostile to entrepreneurial material stuff. That's important. Uh, that's important thing. I mean, uh, in, in Telex I put some quotes from interviews and group discussions which are more, very eloquent, so and express these ideas. So you propose a game, yes. Science is about doing research, guys, and not to selling your research. You see, so uh, uh, mm, 
I think it's more or less understandable. Uh, this uh, science in the world now is, suffers from the uh, what is called neoliberalism, but it's a very catchword, like uh, from a certain marketization, from introduction of KPIs, metrics, uh, all that quantitative stuff. And uh, uh, the scientists are already very unhappy with this uh, metri metrification, quant quant quantitization of their uh, world. So they constantly compare, uh, most of them can compare the current uh, situation to like what was 50 years ago when they were like, here's your lab, here's your funding, work, that's it. Like, 19th century, 20th century, and, and uh, they uh, treat crypto economy, token economy, material incentives, all these ideas of um, investing into each other, of peer-to-peer -peer funding, as in another intrusion of something completely alien to their way of life, you see? Okay, so that's important point. Another one. Um, they emphasize people we've talked to emphasize that uh, these new ideas of blockchain for science, of DAOs, of crypto economy are something akin to a social network logic. So Facebook style economy, Facebook style interactions. So when you uh, uh, measure attention of other scholars in some tokens or in some reputation metrics, whatever, this becomes, uh, the science transforms into a hunt for attention, into a hunt for reputation. So something which is already there in this age index and uh, citation counts, but even on a, on a, on a uh, more, uh, more serious scale. Like you see, so I just engage other people to vote for me, to upvote, to put more likes on my project, and that's it. So they say, no, science is not about. It further obscures the, uh, the science as a search for some real truth, all right? Real truth. OK, another thing is that uh, many of these uh, mechanisms, like TCR, curation markets, and DAOs especially, are built across a certain political ideas and political mechanisms like open discussions, like all that open science, when the rules are discussed, like I said before, like, right? That the rules of the game are discussed in the open and transparent way and set up collectively, not by some guys in somewhere sitting in grand committees, whatever, right? So this uh, uh, the anti-hierarchical approach of blockchain, right? And, uh, but the scientists emphasize that when you make science more open, more democratic in a sense, it uh, further in, increases their conformity. So the majority wins, right? Which was, I mean, in mm, many, uh, starting from this 51% stuff, so many of these uh, models are based on majority voting, and many DAOs are based, most of them are on majority voting. Uh, and so that means that uh, in any open discussions, in any open uh, democratic institutions, uh, online, e-democracy, e e-governance, etc., we have uh, like the, the pressure to, uh, to uh, the allure of fashionable, more, more hype, hype kind of uh, hype projects would be so strong that other, other ideas, other projects would just be dumped. You see? Is this clear? All right. Another important point uh, in DAOs and peer-to-peer -peer funding and curation markets, so, uh, they would not uh, make science more egalitarian, more democratic. Uh, they would not remove uh, the third parties, in a sense, because uh, existing mafias or cliques or groups or, I don't know, biased uh, communities would seem to reproduce themselves. In this, like, in this way or another. So, you see? Okay. Another important point. We talk, blockchain is very much about decentralization and transparency. And transparency, as I said before. Uh, and so many of these projects are also about collaborative science, like the people across the globe participating in common projects across the boundaries, etc. right? Uh, and this idea is treated uh, in a negative way because uh, I, I didn't anticipate this. 
Because the people would say that any open discussion of the rules of the game, whatever the rules, I mean, metrics, publications, uh, good, good projects, bad projects, I mean, so uh, if, if we have this, a market for ideas, it's one bad thing because it's market money, dirty things. And stuff. If we have uh, ideas like an open forum of discussions, DAOs, collective, collective uh, governance, etc., it's another bad thing because uh, a war would break up. Because academia consists of many competing groups, uh, tribes, uh, in res research agendas, and they somehow learn to coexist in the real world, but not by, by ignoring each other in a sense. Like, well, analytical and continental philosophy, for example, well, uh, like some, uh, well, politically, in humanities, we have more politically judged gender studies and more like conservative, like history or classical literature. And so uh, if they start to discuss their agendas in the open, they would clash. So in order to survive, they just uh, draw grants from different institutions, uh, participate in different conferences, so kind of a polite coexistence. But if we have any kind of an open discussion about how science should be organized, how uh, certain projects should be run, it means war. It means uh, uh, c conflict. And people don't want to, to engage in conflicts when there's opportunity to not to engage in conflicts. All right? You see? So uh, uh, one of the underlying ideas of this whole initiative is that science is, should be run by scientists, not by the third party. So this right? intermediation of science, like blockchain removes intermediaries, uh, some uh, institutions in between. So scientists in, in science, it should mean that science is run by scientists. And scientists don't want the science to be run by scientists. They rather prefer some impartial third party, often, you see. Let the third party decide, and we have no, it's not our business, all right? So, oops. Uh, and the final point here. Uh, let me get to this. Uh, sometimes the vision of the world in blockchain, in DAO, etc., it's about a flat structure, a homogeneous structure of individual entities, like nodes, right? Uh, just a second. Like this, to the right, you see? So individuals making connections with each other through tokens, whatever. Whereas, Whereas uh, the scientists don't see this network of themselves as a homogeneous um, and flat thing. They see it uh, as a set of collective entities. So something clo perhaps close to whales, like hidden, uh, hidden possessors of a big amount of ho hordes of tokens. So they... E Oops. Anyway... Uh, so uh, any kind of uh, open science or uh, transparent rules of the game or market kind of a DAOs or whatever, it would just mean that the existing groups, school gangs... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Otherwise, we'll, like, end up. Yes, so otherwise, that's it. Otherwise, otherwise Lombard will yell at me tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. No, sorry, seriously, we have to like, stick with this now. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah, I know, I know. Thank you. <laughs> no, if you want to have the audience, like with Q and A, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So basically, that's my point. I'm not uh, just on one thing. I'm not saying I would not say that these uh, objections and these concerns are country-specific. I think this would. I mean, if you ask scientists in Germany or US, you would have you would have something uh, not entirely similar, but more or less the same. So basically, the uh, point of my presentation is we have to consider and think about this objections to blockchain ideas in science. So thank you. Any questions? Thank you.